Okay, see. So look right. Are you seeing it? So when we look at this one, we want to create a new class that keeps track of information about parks, like national parks or state parks. It says to include data members such as. So it probably needs all of those, right? It looks like if we scroll down and look at our output, we're gonna need the majority of that information. Then we need methods. So we're gonna need a bunch of different methods here in this class. One, to return a string that's the name of the park, the location, and the type of the park. So if I scroll down, I'll see some output that gives me those pieces of information. I need another method that returns a string representing the name of the park, the location, and the facilities available. We need another method that computes the cost per visitor based on the annual budget and the number of visitors during the last 12 months and compute the revenue from fees for the past year based on the number of visitors and fees. And finally, we need a two-string method that returns all of our data fields these with appropriate labels so that we know what that information is. And then we want to revise our main class to test our part class. So here is the code actually that we want to add to our main class to create those park instances. Now in that REPL, we have a lot of people that have completed it and a lot of people that are in process working on it. If you haven't started on it, notice that it's going to take you a little while, so make sure you get to it. Now, as a student, if I am working on this this evening and I'm not sure what to do, I'm just totally stuck, that's okay, because that's why we're using REPL as the facility, because you can come up here and just click Submit, and it's going to say, your output doesn't match. You're going to say, that's okay, submit it anyway. And then you're going to go to Discord or whatever facility and send me a message and say, I submitted a REPL with a question. It would be best if you could tell me this information, 4-2 part class, in our specific REPL course so that I can find it. And then I can get into your REPL and I can see what's wrong. So if you haven't even gotten started, I can help you get started. If you're a long ways through, I can help you over the hurdle that you've run into. So just so you know, this one is not easy peasy. It's Monday. It's not due till tomorrow at midnight, so you still have a lot of time, but don't put it off until the last minute because it does require a lot of thought and, a, and quite a bit of work here in creating it. Now, as an aside, if you would rather use Visual Studio to create this because you think it would go faster and then you want to copy it and paste it into REPL, you can do that too, that's fine. Just remember, REPL doesn't like those, um, what is it, solution statements. Okay, and then the last one, we have a few people that are at too. These are the people that are so close to being done, and this one is a large REPL, it really is. We don't have very many in our course this semester that are this large, don't worry. This one is just kind of a review, throw it all at you, hope that you can remember how to do everything. Okay, in this application, we're looking at a completed student app. So it's already done, but it's a starting point. So we're going to change it. So can I run it? I should be able to run it because it says that it's already working. And here it's going to prompt me for my student information. And then it's going to ask me for some scores for this student and then average them up. 
So that's what this working application does right now. We need to add to this application, and we want to validate the major that gets typed in. So right now, somebody can type anything in for what the major is for this student. So we're going to add a new class. And in REPL, all of our classes show up as separate files up here. So we can add a new one fairly easily. Sometimes it gets a little weird and we have to refresh and close out a REPL and reopen and stuff like that. But it can, it can do it. Now we're going to add that new class, major.cs. And in our class, we're going to have a data element that is an array of all of our valid majors, and we only have three of them. We're going to have a two string in our major class that just outputs the elements of our array. And then we're going to have a method that returns whether or not the major that was supplied is valid or not. So definitely an hour or two. Now that's definitely some stuff to work on at home. That's why I wanted to give you time in class to work on your ROSES application and work with each other on that. Now when you get together with your study group, try to not worry too much about the REPLs because we just are just reviewed them. You have time to work on those. You can definitely message each other with questions about them. How did you do this? What would you recommend I do to get started? We can copy and paste code from all sorts of different places. So we want to look at our application that we were working on last time. I'm going to open Visual Studio. Yeah, it's what? Did it crash? No, it might just Folder if you want to, if that's in a better place, but the desktop's going to be rebuilt every night. It's like it's wiping it out for you. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with this code canvas. Okay, you can find yeah, it anyway. So guys. Can, I'm <laughs> on canvas, so. This ain't for it to be such a pain. Everything's like, oh, go here, go there. 75 different places. <coughs> now, I posted that this code. Because I know we were just getting into Visual Studio last time. Some of you were having extremely low log, slow logins. Some people were having extremely slow get into Visual Studio at all. So I just kind of wanted to step back and review. We started this project. We made it a Windows Forms project. We went to our resources. Does anyone remember how we got to our resources folder? We were looking at our project, right? And for our project, we looked at its properties. So we could do that by right-clicking in our Solution Explorer or by using our project menu. But in our project properties then, we came up here to this drop-down because it said string and we changed it to images. So we were looking at all of our images in our resources folder and then we were able to drag and drop those dice in there. Then for our form, we created a form load. That's the only code we put in. And in our form load, we created a new instance of a picture box. We used our image. And we put 
that on the screen by adding it to our controls. We talked last time that if we if we had our own die class, D6, is that what it was? D6, D8, D6, <laughs> die D6. We could use all of this information from a picture box class because the picture box already contains information like what's the image, what's the location of this control on the form, what other kinds of things do I need to know about this picture box? Yes, sir. Let's see, so I'll post this thing. Um, I'll have to zip it before I can put it on Canvas, so take me a minute. Um, whenever we're looking at our picture box, control, I'm gonna zip this here. Eventually, because it won't, it gives me that no permission thing. You can see how hard it is to post things to Canvas. Yes, sir? Good question. Are we supposed to save things just as a picture at the OneDrive now? Apparently so. So I would put everything on one drive. I don't have a lot of my stuff. Like, and remember, you guys can leave it on the C drive in that source yeah. repos folder and just make sure you check it into TFS because TFS is really the better place to keep it backed up. If you keep it on your one drive, that's a network location. And then you're checking that into TFS, which is another network location. This is getting really network laden, and we saw how working with the network was working last week. It yeah. shouldn't be a problem. I just don't see, like, I have none of my files on my H drive here. That's what Carmen was talking about, yeah, too. Is everybody else in the same H drive? Yeah, is it just all my stuff I have? Are your H drive still there? Do you have your stuff? Because, I mean, I think that mine got copied to my OneDrive, but I haven't really yeah, checked for sure. And yes, PowerPoints and stuff. Yeah, this, is, this is all the stuff I had on my OneDrive. And it's still missing. Oh, you already had it out there. Yeah, this is all like this is all the stuff I had on my one drive already. Like you can see the edit time was like forever. Yeah. 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 Oh, there it is. Yeah. Is it in there? Yes, yeah. yeah. documents in the one drive. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Well, I will get this one zipped and posted out to Canvas, but it'll take me a minute because I've got to find a location where I can make a zip file and not be secured out of, because I can't do that on my OneDrive apparently, so I'll figure that out. All right, so our picture box control has everything we need. So we would like to use that object as a base and inherit from it. We want to extend that picture box object type and use it for our dice. So when I look at my dice, the picture box already has all of the data I need. I just need to add what, like a score? Can you think of anything else? Let's look at our picture. We said that for a die, we needed the face value. We already have the image file as part of the picture box, and we needed a score. So I'm going to add the face value. Everything else that we need to keep track of for this die is part of our picture box control already. So I'm just going to inherit from that picture box control. Reusability, that's what I want with C Sharp. I want to be able to reuse this code. So I have this picture box control. I'm going to put it over here.
and it has all these different data types and it has all these different methods already created that are given to me by C Sharp that I can use. Now I'm going to create a new class called DIE D6 and it is going to inherit from that picture box control. So that means it's going to have everything that a picture box has plus it's going to have more because it's going to extend it. So some terminology. This is going to be the parent class or picture box control. Our die is going to be the child. That's one way of referring to them. We could also say that our picture box control is going to be the base class and our die class is going to be the derived class. Because it doesn't mean anything on its own, it only means something if it's derived from the picture box. Now, a couple of other terms. This die class extends the picture box class. That's a kind of a term we use to say that it takes it and it makes it even more. It extends it into something else. Because now it's not just a picture of anything, it's a picture of a die. And we know what its score is and what its face value is because we've added these things to that picture box. So we've extended its capability. Now, all of this all together is inheritance. When I'm using inheritance in C sharp, I am starting with one class and then I'm extending that class by adding things to it using another. So I could do that to our project very quickly and easily. I could come over here and create a new class. And don't worry, I'll post this to add class. And I'll call it die D6. And now I want my class die D6 to inherit from the picture box class. So all I do is update my class statement to include a colon and the class name that I want to inherit from. <coughs> What's it called? Is it spelled out picture box? I'll have to go back and look. I'm too dead this morning. We said picture box. So it should let us use that. Well, that all looks perfect. Why doesn't it like it? I'm going to go back to our form class and see whenever we're using a picture box class, it's coming from a special class library. So what class library, if we were looking up here at all of our using statements, do you think that picture box control is coming from? Windows Forms. So I'm going to copy that using statement because I'm not finding that picture box control. I'm going to copy that to my die D6 class and then it can find that picture box control to inherit from. Now in my class, I can just say that I have a private int score and a private int base value and now I've got a new class and this class is completely dependent upon my picture box class but it has these new variables now I want you to move around and get together with your study group and I'm going to stop here and let you guys do some working and figuring out on your own. Because if I went back to my CS file, right here, could I, could I change these to be instances of die D6 now? New. No. 
guy d6. And then, of course, I would have to change my um, anything else, but it looks like it's happy, right? Because my die d6 class has an image and a location and all these other data fields because it inherited those from the picture box control. Now, how would we add to our score or change it? I could say, because I called this thing picture box two, I could use picture box two dot. Oh, I didn't expose any though, did I? I left them private. Whoops. Let me add a property here. Okay, so now we can set our score. Seven or whatever we want, because now we can access those fields just the same as we can access any of the other fields in the picture box. So if I want to inherit from a class in C Sharp, the only thing I need is that colon, and I have my class, my child name, and then my inherits from my parents. I'm going to stop I'm making a mess. All right. Let's get with your study group. Let's make sure things haven't changed too much for you. And I will post this so you guys can analyze it and discuss it amongst yourselves. Make sure they haven't changed. Let me find my canvas. I don't think you guys changed what's taking as an online class. Sometimes I forget. Online class. Didn't make my changes, did it? There it let me. Okay, study group four is smaller with only three people, but I think that they're just two wonderful people that should be fine. So you guys go ahead and split yourselves back up. Should basically be the groups you were with last time, except that Colleen and Jayong have swapped. All right, see who you can find and make them come to the spot where the most people already are. I do want you to log on. I'm gonna be getting this application zipped up and posted so that you can grab it and unzip it. Now we have until 9.50, so Please stay and work with your study group and try to analyze the code that we're looking at. You're going to want to expand on that die class, figure out how to make this game. We have last time this time too, so get out of here.